What's up guys, Davenator1212. And it's List Day. Ah uh, yes, List Day, and today we're looking at the top 10 best spirit monsters in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Spirit monsters hold a special place in my heart. They were one of the first decks I took to locals, roughly the mid XC era, and had had some kind of competitive success with them. And I kind of continue to have decent success with them into like the Duelist Alliance era. I like the spirits. They're a fun, interesting relic of the beginning of the game. They are not a true archetype, instead a type of effect monster, the word spirit being placed down in their effect text line. So they are similar to toon monsters in this fashion, as they are a holdover from the beginning of the game where Konami was trying to create an archetype without calling it an archetype and they didn't quite know how to communicate to the player that this group of monsters should be used together. So this was their first way of trying to get that across to the player base. So this is kind of an interesting, you know, antique type Yu-Gi-Oh card. But anyway, let's get started. Number 10 is a classic Dark Dust Spirit. Level 6 Earth Zombie Monster, 2,200 attack, 1,800 defense. What do? Cannot be special summoned. During the end phase of this turn, if this card was normal summoned or flip face up, return it to the hand. Those two lines of text are important for us because most spirit monsters have those two lines of texts. Like how toons all have a common thread with their summoning sickness, spirit monsters have a common thread where they cannot be special summoned and return to the hand at the end of the turn. Not all of them do this, but it is important to know. And moving forward, we just won't mention it. Unless, of course, they don't do this or something. But Dark Dust Spirit does have its own unique effect. When this card is normal summoned or flipped face up, destroy all other face up monsters on the field. Ah, it's a big old board nuke on its normal summon. Make tribute summoning cool again. <laughs> As level 6, you mean you got a tribute for it, which is kind of a pain in the butt, but you could use some of the Monarch stuff, I guess, if that's what you're trying to go for. And being an Earth Zombie isn't the worst thing in the world, because that means you could play it in like a zombie deck, and zombies do have a good way of getting tribute material on the field. It's not exactly what they're trying to do most of the time, most of the time trying to synchro, but, you know, it is an option for you if you want to play this card. And destroying all face-up monsters on the field, that's a big effect. Number 9, Kinkabio. Level 1 Dark Beast Monster, 400 attack, 200 defense. What do? Its unique effect says when this card is normal summoned or flipped face up, you can target one level 1 monster in your graveyard, special summon it, but banish it when it leaves the field. Okay, so King of Bio ends up actually being a pretty solid little starter, or extender, depending on where you are in your combo, I guess. Oh, Dave! You can't combo! It doesn't have a lot of synergy with the other spirit monsters because a lot of them are level 4, but this thing does have a home in any kind of level 1 spam deck. Alright, number 8, here we go. Oh god, uh, Kono Hanasukiya. <laughs> For some odd reason they didn't translate any of the spirits names, they just transliterate them, so they're basically just Romanji. Is that, is that the term for that? You smell that? It smells like, like a f***ing weeb. Level 3 Earth Fairy Monster. 1300 attack, 1300 defense. And this is our first exception to the rule where the spirits can't be special summoned. This one can't actually be normal summoned, but it can be special summoned from your hand if you control another spirit monster. And you can only special summon one of these guys this way this turn. It does, however, still return to the hand during the end phase like any good spirit but does have a graveyard effect in addition to its special summoning condition. Once per turn during the end phase, you can banish this thing from your graveyard to target one face-up spirit monster you control. Neither player can activate that face-up monster's effects on the field for the rest of the turn. <laughs> Neither player. Interesting. <laughs> How does your opponent activate one of your effects? Ah, whatever. <laughs> Basically, the idea here is you can banish this thing from your graveyard to stop one of the spirits from bouncing to the hand during the end phase. It's just a way to get around that negative effect that they have. This one is neat because it's one of the few spirit monsters that can just special summon itself at the expense of not being able to be normal summoned, but it does give you a free body on board, which is important when you're trying to basically do anything in modern Yu-Gi-Oh. I would have loved this card a few years ago. The... The boost that this gives to a cohesive strategy with spirits is a little too little too late, I guess. But it is a free body. It's a shame that it is a level 3 and not a 4 because it's a little bit clumsy with uh, if you're trying to do like a, a rank 4 spam engine. But you could use it for link summonings and that's at least a thing. It's also an earth fairy, not a light fairy. Uh, but yeah, it's fine. 
we go, Aratama. Level four Dark Fiend, 800 attack, 1800 defense. What do? Has the normal spirit effects, but also when this card is normal summoned or flipped face up, you can add one spirit monster from your deck to your hand except itself. Ah, it's the Stratos for the strategy. <laughs> if uh, spirits is a strategy. Is the worst strategy, well, okay, maybe it's not the worst strategy, but it is certainly the most risky strategy out there. Level four, that's handy, gets another monster, very nice, doesn't have a level restriction or a type restriction or anything as long as it is a spirit monster. Cool. And being that all the spirits are kind of all over the place with everything uh, except for the fact that they are spirits and the theming of their effects, it is nice that this isn't restricted in any kind of way because some of them are very clearly meant to not be played in a spirit deck, if you know what I mean. No Dave, please enlighten us. I do like that it can search on a flip. Uh, it gives you that excuse to use that 1800 booty for something, although that's a... <laughs> That's a slow way to search in modern Yu-Gi-Oh. Still like the card though, and certainly a necessary three of in any spirit deck. All right, number six is another oddball for spirits. These are the Shino Barons. Shino Baron Peacock and Shino Baroness Peacock. Why isn't it Peahen? Peafowl, I think is what they're called, right? Like equivalent of chicken? Everything is a chicken. I should have left you on that street corner where you were standing. But she didn't! Because the Peacock Baroness, uh, <laughs> that gives you some, uh, interesting, interesting implications. For those of you who are actually watching the screen and not just, like, I don't know, listening to me while you're pooping, will notice that this is a blue card. Hmm. Interesting. Must be a ritual monster. And given the fact that most of the spirits can't be special summoned, a ritual monster being a spirit is... Uh, probably one of the weirdest combinations you could have expected, and when these things came out, everyone were like, Oh, that's... That's not what I would have thought of the next spirit monsters to be. They are both wind wing beast monsters, level eight, with Baron being a 3k beater in attack with 2,500 defense and Baroness being 2,500 attack, 3k defense. She got the bigger booty. And their effects are pretty much the same thing. You can ritual summon this with ritual calling. That line of text is just explaining to you what the ritual spell to use with these things is. Must be ritual summoned and can't be special summoned other ways. Okay, cool. And during the end phase, these things also, like other spirits, return to the hand. However, because you used a ritual spell to summon these things and presumably lost resources doing so, they each leave two Shino Bird tokens in their place. Wind, Wing Beast, level four, 1500 attack and defense. After this, their effects diverge slightly. Baron says, when this card is ritual summoned, return up to three monsters on your opponent's side of the field to their hand, and then special summon one level four or lower spirit monster from your deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. Ah, see, that's the kicker, that ignoring summoning conditions is handy because most spirit monsters say they cannot be special summoned, so this thing saying ignore those summoning conditions allows you to circumvent that restriction. Not to mention bouncing three monsters from your opponent's field to their hand is a great way to get rid of a bunch of crap on their field, especially if it's extra deck monsters, because that'll just go back to the extra deck instead. Woo, that's good board, Claren. It also should be noted that it doesn't appear to target, so uh, you, you pick upon resolution. Uh, that's that's pretty dangerous. Makes your opponent have to make a move against it. That's always a good, uh, always a good pressure. Baroness, conversely, when she is ritual summoned, she shuffles back to the deck three spell or traps your opponent currently controls. And then again, special summons a level four or lower spirit monster from the deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. Which one is better is a bit up for debate. Bouncing three monsters to the hand is neat, especially if they're extra deck monsters, but if they're not, they're not getting permanently removed from the game, or at least more permanently. Baroness spinning three cards back to the deck is very, very good way of getting them out of play, especially because spell and traps tend to be less searchable than monsters. So sticking them back in the deck is a good way to get them out of the game, but does rely on your opponent playing more back row than normal. Most decks play a bunch of monsters, but not every deck plays a bunch of back row, so their utility kind of depends on the matchup. The utility of each kind of depends on the matchup, but special summoning a spirit monster from your deck, regardless of which one you use, is pretty nifty. You should probably also mention, because this is a special summon, the monster that you get with the effect probably won't bounce itself during the end phase, because most of them say during the, the turn that this was normal summon, so that's also something to keep in mind. They're not my favorite support for spirits, I think they're neat. Uh, Rituals was not the direction I would have liked the deck to go, but they are pretty good at clearing a board and probably the most competitively viable build of the deck, I suppose. How big of you to admit that? And the support specifically for these two ritual monsters are all pretty good. So it is certainly 
uh, a version of the deck you can you can build around. Typing's good as well. All right, number five, Yadagarasu. Normal rules for a Davenator list is to put the banned cards at the bottom of the list because if it's banned, it must therefore be better than everything else that's not banned. Uh, that's a pretty good assumption. Delinquent Duo is better than most other spell cards in the game and is banned. But not everything on the ban list is is on the ban list because it itself is very good. It just combos dumb with something. And Yadagarasu is arguably one of those cards. So we gave it number five because it is still very good. I just don't think it'd be very good right now if we were to unban it. Level two, Wind Fiend. It's not a it's not a wing beast, even though it's a bird. Interesting. 200 attack, 100 defense. What do? Standard spirit, both of those effects apply. Instead of on its normal summon like other spirits, this thing's effect activates when it does battle damage. Your opponent skips their next draw phase. This card was made famous by being the card that invented the ban list. Early in the days of Yu-Gi-Oh, we didn't have ban cards, we only had limited cards. But when this card was comboed with some kind of board nuke, like Chaos Emperor Dragon, leaving your opponent with literally no cards in their hand or field, then poking them with this thing would basically end the duel. They would fail to draw a card next turn because you skip their draw phase, and they don't have anything on their field or hand, so they have nothing else to play with. So they are effectively stuck watching you start your turn, poke you with this thing, start your turn, poke them with this thing, end your turn, and they're forced to just end their turn and start the cycle again. This lock is the Yada lock, as it was called. <laughs> Such a prevalent and destructive combo that a couple of the Game Boy games uh, were pre-programmed to have the AI quit if you managed to pull it off. They just understood the game state that they would be not able to do anything for a few turns and uh, they would just quit. Your only defense was to make your opponent just play it out. Yeah, you're gonna do 200 to me for every turn and we're gonna waste time in the round. I'm gonna make you do it. <laughs> it's about your only defense. Be be a jerk. Nowadays, I think the combo would be hard to pull off. They they eroded the dragon, so that's, that's one part of this that's not gonna work right. We have more board nukes and a more versatile card pool, so I, I, I suppose there could be some uh, card interaction that we're not thinking of, but getting your opponent to control truly nothing and get an open board state like that and then boop them with this, I feel in modern Yu-Gi-Oh would be an absolute, absolute five card combo to resolve. You gotta get rid of all their monsters with all their protections and all their negates and all the infernity barriers that their deck just kind of searches along the way. I don't think it would work. I wanna see it in Duel Links though. <laughs> I love this little guy, I'd love to see it. Um, it'd be super fun. It would be uh, would be a cheeky tech for the Shino Bird deck because they can just summon this thing to the field and it, it doesn't do its effect on summon, so that's cute. All right, this next one I feel should be higher, but <sighs> Discord rules me. Nikitama, level four light fairy monster, 800 attack, 1800 defense. What do? Normal spirit effect, but also during the turn this was normal summoned or flipped face up, you can normal summon one spirit monster in addition to your regular normal summoner set. You can only gain this effect once per turn. It's not really an activated effect, it's just a condition that the card creates when it is played. Neat. And being a level 4, bestowing you a second normal summon, which is cool because most spirits can only be normal summoned, allows you to make some rank 4 plays. This in Eratom was the basis of the deck that I actually played back in uh, the XC era, using Nikitama and Aratama as a light and dark to make Lavalval Chain and setting up a nifty combo with Blackluster Soldier. That combo facilitated by this thing's second effect, when this card is sent to the graveyard, draw one card. You must control another spirit monster to use this effect. So if I had another spirit on board, I could make Lavalval Chain detach the Nikitama for Lavalval Chain's effect to top deck the BLS. In a new chain, the Nikitama would go off, making you draw a card that top decked BLS. Hee hee hee! Fun! And the fact that the Nikitama and the Aratama were light and dark which means if I did some other shenanigans, I could get him live to be summoned. I loved that deck. I missed my Lavalval chain. <laughs> Dave, you know we can't have chain! I know that. I doesn't mean I can't fuss about it. Oh man, some good memories on these guys. Number three, Azura Priest. Goat Spectacular. Low four light fairy monster. 1700 attack, 1200 defense, what do? Besides its normal spirit effects, this card can attack every monster your opponent controls once. Ow, oh, day good. Great for clearing your goat tokens off the board. <coughs> An interesting tech card for goat format. 
and would be super fun in something like Medulla Lynx. Give it the power of the Guardians and just go ham on an opponent's board. Shame it goes back to the hand. That's what you need the other fairy for. There's really not much else to say. It's, it was just a mass attacker and it just had some com competitive success as a tech card. So, um, sure. Number two, speaking of success as a tech card in GOAT format, Tsukiyomi. Level four dark spellcaster monster. 1100 attack, 1400 defense. Stats are, we don't care too much about that. What do? Normal spirit effects, but when this card is normal summoned or flipped face up, you can target one monster on the field and put it in face down defense position. Ooh. And you know, you can flip your own. Uh, face down, ass up, that's the way we like to It was basically a book of moon on its normal summon, which during a slower, more control format like GOAT meant you can either book one of your opponent's monsters to turn off uh, an effect that you don't really like, or to put face down like something like uh, your Morphing Jar or something. One of your good flip effect monsters you are trying to resolve for a second time. The fact that it doesn't specify yours or your opponent's does give this card some really solid utility in a slower format like GOAT. In modern days, it's, uh, it's a little archaic. But uh, from a competitive success standpoint, it'd be, it'd be really kind of doing Tsukiyomi a disservice to put it any lower. So I don't know. Take this as with what would you will. All right, honorable mentions. Yamada Dragon and Haino Kagusuchi, the two original big boss monsters for spirits. The two guys duking it out on last turn, these two monsters, a level seven and eight respectively, have kind of the opposite effect, which is neat. When Yamada Dragon does battle damage to your opponent, you refill your hand to five cards. Very, very cool. As a level seven fire dragon monster, you could probably play it in Dragon Rulers as like a, a cheeky tech. That would be an impressive way to do it, but eight cards is still pretty good. You think? It'd be a little hard to get on the board, but I think you could do it. And Haino Kagusuchi is a big level eight, and when he inflicts battle damage to your opponent, they discard their entire hand. So it's kind of the opposite ability. They both have decent stats at 2600 and 2800 respectively, which meant, you know, they're big enough to presumably do battle damage. But being a normal spirit where you have to normal summon them, and they go back to the, the hand at the end of the turn meant they're a little clunky to use. But if you could get their effects off, they're, they're, they're absolutely world ending. So that's kind of fun. And the dishonorable mention are the pendulum spirits. They're all bad. You got the sumo guy, the karate guy, and the kendo guy. They all have the same pendulum effect. When you pendulum summon a monster, this thing, if it's in your pendulum zone, gets returned to the hand. Kind of a fake spirit effect. Sure. And their monster effects are all some variation on the theme that when this thing is normal summoned, you send to the graveyard your opponent's cards that are in the same columns as your pendulum zones. Uh, various uh, stipulations for each. But I don't know, you're, if this is your strategy, your opponent's just gonna not put stuff there. <laughs> they're clunky, but they're at least kind of fun. And number one, Amano Awato. Oh man, why is this one number one? Boo! But Dave, it's like actually really good and probably the most competitively successful. Yeah, I know that, but that doesn't mean I gotta like it. Justice for Nikitama. Like every other spirit, it can't be special summon. But what we give a shit about is its other effect. Monsters, except spirit monsters, cannot activate their effects. Ooh. That's not an activated effect, it's a continuous like ability. So as long as this thing's summon sticks, everything else is turned off. That's, that's real good. 1900 attack two means it's just big enough to be a big pain in the ass to get rid of. And if you summon it with like a Shino bird, it's not gonna bounce. Uh, this is probably what you would grab with their effect. It's cute that it says accept spirit monsters, so it doesn't turn its own bouncing effect off. But that, so instead, that's what we used that skill in Duel Links for. <laughs> but this card was not just successful in Duel Links, it was also successful in the TCG. Oh man, what deck used in Mono Awato? I don't remember, it's been a few years. Oh, all I remember was you used to give them the rock and shock. You summon the rock, and then you hit them with like the lightning storm. <laughs> and they can't do anything about it, so you just blow them up. The old rocket shot. Overall, it's it's a really, really, really good little level four. It doesn't have a ton of synergy in a spirit strategy, but spirits don't have a ton of synergy in a spirit strategy. So I guess it's, eh, whatever. Give, give, give a Mono Awato the, the, the props. All right, guys, that was the list. I hope you enjoyed it. That was just a fun little short one. Ryan and I are, are testing out a different type of workflow. So I figured this would be a, a good one to get that kind of moving. 
And remember guys, if you don't troll the meadow who will, I'll see you guys next time. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. Ah, don't you know what to do? Think all you like, you're still gonna stomp that subscribe button. Make sure to watch these other videos. Come on, quit stalling. Fossilizing over here. Slow play. Judge!